I think we're moving away from insanely high fidelity graphics, Chad. I, I had a funny observation. Also, we were just talking during dinner. I think one of the contributing factors why Final Fantasy also has been decreasing in popularity over the years with FF16 and like Rebirth is also the fact that graphics don't exactly matter as much. And Final Fantasy as an overall series as an overall existence, like the whole point of it, every new Final Fantasy game is gonna blow your balls off visually. All the way up until Final Fantasy XV has that been true. And even FF7 Remake to a certain degree, that, that shit was true, where it's like, oh my God, the upgrade from the previous system to this one, holy shit, bro. Like Final Fantasy is the game that you buy to like justifies my console existence. Like I buy this because look how good it looks. Like, holy shit. Final Fantasy has always gotten a lot of sales based on that n relationship where people just don't give a shit about Final Fantasy, but it'll pick people up and get them to play because it's just visually gorgeous. All I'm pitching is that graphics are obviously great, obviously beautiful, obviously makes you feel like, oh, my system is worth it. This console generation specific I don't feel like graphics are selling games anymore because some of the games that all of a sudden just like explode and on top and are on top like all of a sudden through virality and whatnot are good looking games but are they like the Uncharted's or something like that that really pushed visuals and all this kind of shit? Not really. Like the virality of certain games sort of blows up. It is due to other reasons other than just straight visuals. So now you get clearly amazing looking games, which is Rebirth and 16, gorgeous games, like holy shit, dude. But they don't perform as well because people just aren't in it for the visuals anymore. And then you get something like Elden Ring. And I like this comparison. I'm gonna be real, Elden Ring is a gorgeous game. But I just looked at the gameplay trailer and that bitch ass game is not graphically impressive, bro. They're like doing all these zoom ins and tight shots of shit. And I'm like, yeah, this game is kind of rough visually. Most games now, if you like zoom in so much, and it still looks good and it's like that's important about the game no games like elden ring and even especially ff7 rebirth to a certain degree you zoom in on with a microscope and you get this close and you're like wow this game looks like shit. but then you go back from here and you're like whoa this game's gorgeous like uh, even zelda game breath of the wild is that shit where it's like back from here this game's gorgeous zoom in this game looks like fucking trash dude i don't think we need to do this anymore personally for a lot of these games with these big worlds and all this crazy shit that's in them i don't think we need to just peer into every corner every facet it's making games take way too long to come out if there is a problem with this current era in the industry that i personally hate why the hell are games taking four to seven years to come out? That is where shit needs to change. We do not need that extra fidelity. We don't. Where you spend so much money on this shit, you're effectively seven, eight days, nine days, 12 days into your lethal company profit quota. And you're the Spider-Man 2 devs looking at that profit quota. And it's like, well, we made... It cost us so much money to get here, and where are we at? We have to make that much fucking money on this shit, and we don't hit the quota. Now people are laid off, even though you had, like, a banger of a run. Your game was incredible. It's like, this is not a functioning business anymore. This isn't. This doesn't work out this way, dude. Through the looking glass at every single tiny bit and piece of everything. It isn't fun for us. It doesn't add any actual element to the game. I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. I think the majority of games do not need to do that shit. They don't, and they shouldn't be doing that shit. To be real, you know what games are also like that? And they really kind of fall apart when you when you get that close to things. Almost all of Capcom games in RE Engine. You really look like, take a sniper scope with Leon and RE4 and zoom in and look at little spots. And you're like, this looks like shit. This actually kind of looks sort of bad, but from the natural perspective the game presents to you, it's fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. Seemingly, Capcom has gotten Dragon's Dogma 2 is, yeah, I'd imagine no exception, even though we didn't really look at that game too much. All I'm saying is that Capcom has seemingly found a pretty decent balance. You know what game's also like that? Monster Hunter World. <laughs> Monster Hunter World is the same shit. That game is fucking butt ugly when you stop and you just look at one spot. It's fucking butt ugly. But when you're running and doing things, it's gorgeous. Dude, this shit is awesome. Oh my God, this shit is awesome. That's what I'm saying. It is an old engine. It's an old ass game on like a decade plus old engine, but they were able to pump out the best selling Capcom game ever 
on technically old visuals. Now I go back and I look at it and it's like the Switch is the best example of that. You know, even Monster Hunter Rise looks like an upscaled fucking PSP game at times. And it sold a shit ton. And it's insanely rough looking. And I forgot about the visuals of Monster Hunter World when I was playing Rise just because it was like, well, this is great. So anyway, related to Final Fantasy, all I'm saying is that Final Fantasy is a franchise that has sort of been based on the fact that every single new Final Fantasy is going to blow your balls off with its graphics and make you feel like you spent that 400 to 500 bucks on your console. We're going to make it worth it, bro. From the PS1 to the PS2 to the fucking PS3, even the PS4. To be real, FF7 Remake and Final Fantasy 15, you're like, God damn, dude. Yeah, holy shit. This feels like a big upgrade over PS3 shit. Hell yeah. This is pretty cool. Now we have the smallest amount of return investment on newer consoles compared to the previous one, man. The amount of shit that has effectively changed from the previous generation to this generation to an actual relative perception is mad low. It is big, don't get me wrong. Load times and how that impacts the overall game experience is profound. SSDs, in my opinion, are where this shit shines. That shit is amazing. But to be real, all of the extra time and effort gone going into raw visual fidelity is not worth the time or the return of investment from the previous generation to this one. It's just not worth it. It doesn't feel like anything has really changed that much. This generation is really disappointing just in general. The only way that it's not disappointing is in SSDs, is in fast ass loading. And now we can change our games to play differently because of fast loading. I think that is 100% worth it. If we're talking about just like, oh, am I super enthused about my PS5 or next box over the previous one? Fuck no, dude. Absolutely not. There is still only one game on my PS5 that I emphatically feel is a substantial massive upgrade from the previous generation. It's only one game, I still fire it up and go, holy sweet dumb hell. Right there, it's this launch game. So to me, it's like from what I've played personally, this shit is the only thing that felt like it was a big update, right? And a substantial update from the previous generation. What I'm saying is that I don't think it's worth it. I think it's good that these games are running better, but is it worth it for these games to take like five to six years to exist? To put in every goddamn amount of effort, detail, developer time, concept art, all of this shit into the microscopic goddamn details of every single room? And I don't think it's worth it, man. I don't think it adds anything to the game either. For most developers to effectively throw out a game because it's so expensive to do this shit now, the game has to sell a shit ton or else the, the studio is sunk. So it's like, hey, we're gonna do this and if it works, we're really gonna be in it or if it doesn't work, we're fucking dead. That sort of a mentality leads an industry to take no risks. We can't take any risks anymore. We lost this, we lost that, we fucked up here, we fucked up there. That leads us to an in industry that is not creative. Creativity is now not encouraged. You just have to be safe and do this one thing that we know is gonna work. Game industry is made by creative people. The truly great games that are out there are made by creative people. It's the same thing for every goddamn thing. The stuff that we love so much is not made at a board meeting. It's made by people who have a fucking vision and they get everybody in line with their vision and they execute within limited periods of time. Movie industries like that, the game industry like that everything's like that with with larger scale development it's not a factory you know all i'm saying is that nintendo of all companies seemingly is coming out on top now because they sort of get it they knew they did not have to push graphical fidelity and people still invested heavily in nintendo even now with their next generation they're moving to something potentially ps4 pro uh in terms of visuals clearly their workload's going to get much bigger but dude, they're gonna be in a spot where game development was at like 10 years ago, and it's gonna look way better, don't get me wrong, but still, their choice to put out games isn't because they're taking forever to make, it's because that's just the way Nintendo fucking works. They do whatever the hell they want. They don't give a shit. They're just gonna do what they want when they want, you know?